I had a pretty rough night of sleep last night. I was coughing quite a lot. I mean, waking up quite often throughout the night. And when I woke up, I would start having a coughing fit, which would keep me up. Then the coughing would also lead to my head starting to ache and getting like really strong migraines, which would keep me up longer. So yeah, it was just kind of a perpetuating cycle that was not conducive to optimal sleep. Let's put it that way. But we're here. Still don't feel like terribly tired, even though it wasn't the greatest night's sleep. I think that's just a testament to how good my sleep has been over the long term, where I can get away with what poorer nights of sleep, even though it wasn't really my own fault. I didn't really do much wrong in regards to preparation for sleep. I went to bed um, the time I usually go to bed. Didn't do anything wrong with my lighting levels. It was simply because of whatever illness I've got at the moment. I don't even know what it is. Probably COVID or some kind of cold, something like that. Anyway, I weighed in at 92.65 kg first thing this morning. Here's a little physique check at the start of the day. So you can compare this to the post-workout pump, which will be for my chest and shoulders because that's what that is, as you can see in the title of the video, unless I somehow fall really ill after eating my meals and can't get to the gym, which doesn't feel very likely at the moment. I do feel much better overall than I have done over the last few days. So yeah, definitely on the right track, definitely recovering from this illness, but just very slowly. So it's just gonna have to be one day at a time. But in regards to the chest and shoulder workout, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna train my chest first or my shoulders first, because I have been for the last two or three sessions now, hit my shoulders first, but I think I want to alternate between. So one session I target my chest first, the next session I target my shoulders first, just so that each one gets a priority session roughly once a week, because I think that's the best way to go about it. So today I'm probably going to start off with my chest, and also that way I can lift a bit heavier on the dumbbells, because I won't be, more well, my front delts won't be fatigued. And obviously on an incline press, they're coming into play quite significantly. Anyway, without further ado, let's go and fuel up with some breakfast. So first up I've got some scrambled eggs and avocado as per usual. Then I've got some porridge oats with milk, protein powder, banana, pear and cinnamon. So I kicked off the chest portion of my workout with some incline dumbbell pressing. Now, just to show how much stronger I am when I'm training my chest first in comparison to my shoulders first and then my chest, I was able to hit about 9 or 10 reps in my first two sets with the 30 kilo dumbbells, whereas after hitting my shoulders, I could only manage about 5 or 6, which just goes to show how important it is to prioritize the muscle group that you want to grow the most because you're only going to be able to get as much intensity as required. Anyway, after three sets on the incline dumbbell press, I moved over to the machine chest press for three sets. And a change I made today was lowering the seat to the lowest possible position, as this enables the maximum incline possible on this machine, because ultimately my goal with chest training is to target my upper chest as much as possible, because your lower chest gets hit with all of the movements regardless. So I wanna be making sure that my upper chest is also receiving adequate volume to hopefully try and build myself some shelves of chests. Anyway, after six sets in total of pressing movements, I went on to some fly movements. So that began with two sets on the pec deck where I used the setting that keeps my arms as far in front of me as possible for the starting position as this allows me to push with much more intensity and since the squeeze at the end of the movement is what I'm really trying to focus on with the flies it allows me to get much more intensity in that movement. Anyway next up I moved on to two sets of the press around. Now this is a movement I haven't done in a long time so my form is not the greatest I do warn you but still a very good movement nonetheless for isolating each pec individually. Now this is something I've been trying to do more of for all of my muscle groups, just isolating each side of my, of my body, basically my left and right, just to make sure that there's no imbalances or so that any imbalances are addressed. And with my chest, it's not the case that one pec is stronger than the other, they're both pretty equal in strength. So it isn't the biggest deal to be honest. And 
yeah, I can't lie, the stretch and squeeze on this didn't feel as great as the pec deck, so I might be reverting back to just the pec deck for my next chest session. Anyway, then I went to check out the chest pump because I didn't want to lose it when I, whilst I was training shoulders, so yeah, get a look at this. It was pretty incredible. I mean, the chest pump in isolation definitely makes it pop out a lot more, whereas when I add my shoulders into the mix as well, it doesn't look as big in comparison. But yeah, that's just because my shoulders look bigger as well. So then it was time to go and hit my shoulders, which I started off with the machine shoulder press. And I kept things simple and just did five sets on this exercise. And I think this is a trend I will continue to see with my workout routines in the coming months, where on days where I'm prioritizing my chest over my shoulders, I just stick to the machines mostly for my shoulder pressing movements. And then on the days where I'm prioritizing my shoulders before my chest, that's where I'll bring some free weights into the picture because I do think it is important to train with free weights in all of your muscle groups where you can just to make sure that your stabilizing muscles are being tested really. And of course I do do some other stability work to make sure that this happens, but I like to do it with a significant amount of resistance, which is obviously provided by the free weights. Anyway, next up I moved on to three sets of some standard side lateral raises with the dumbbells. And then I followed this up with some full range of motion lateral raises with some lighter dumbbells which allows me to go through the full range of motion of my shoulder until I can't get my arm above my shoulder joint anymore and then to burn out in the normal range of motion, which is a really effective way to get an insane burn on your side delts. As you've probably heard me say many times before if you've watched any of my previous shoulder workouts on the channel. And I think it is always best to finish your workouts on these kind of more burning sensation movements as you don't need to worry about holding anything back as you're almost leaving the gym. Anyway, then I finished up my gym session with 30 minutes of cardio on the seated bike as per usual. Then for my post-workout meal, I've got some Greek yogurt with protein powder, fruit and nuts. Then I've got some beef meatballs with veggies and potatoes. Then to finish up my eating for today, I've got some chicken breast with veggies and a sweet potato. And that concludes another pretty damn successful day of bulking. I'll put my calories for the day on screen for you right now, about 4,200 calories. So right in my range for what I want to be eating on a consistent basis, because eating this many calories is going to allow me to build muscle and gain weight whilst not gaining too much unnecessary excess fat. Because obviously I'm expecting to get gain a bit of fat because I'm bulking, although I preferably wouldn't gain as minimal fat as possible but it is the nature of the beast that when you're trying to build muscle and gain weight some of that weight is going to end up being fat unless you really want to dial in with your training and diet to a degree that I simply can't be bothered to do if I'm being honest I mean I do take a lot of it seriously I obviously track all of my calories I obviously train really hard and consistently and do my cardio but yeah I probably lack enough discipline with my diet and the types of foods that I eat to be able to lean bulk, really, to be able to not gain any kind of excess fat. And also lack the experience in bulking in general. Because I think to be able to lean bulk, either you're going to be genetically gifted in the fact that you can't gain fat as easily as I can. Or you're going to have a lot of experience of bulking and cutting. Whereas I mainly have experience with cutting. I've never really, this is my first real intentional bulk. So... Yeah, I'm still learning as I go. My body is learning and adjusting as I go. Obviously, I know the theory, but implementing the theory into reality is much harder than it seems sometimes. I mean, I know there's some people in my comment section who are always just <laughs> calling me out, saying that I'm doing this wrong, doing that wrong. But at the end of the day, not everything is going to plan all the time. Some days I'm going to eat more calories than I need. You know, I'm going to end up missing some days at the gym due to illness or injury, right? But I try my best and that's all I can really ask for of myself to know that I try my best, not to just half ass it and say, oh, I tried my best. No, I genuinely put a lot of effort in. I'm very conscious of what I'm eating. But yeah, some days I lose the battle of willpower and some days I win it like today. Anyway, tomorrow should be a back day. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you then. Cheers.